Arsenal won Manchester United nil in what was probably a very boring and bad game of football. Because I tell you what, Man United matched Arsenal's levels today. I saw that lineup and I thought Arsenal were going to completely and utterly batter us. I saw that substitution bench and I thought, oh my. And I have to say, the effort levels from Manchester United, I'm impressed with. But the individual quality is not there and Arsenal have a little bit more individual quality than us. And that's why they won today. But the effort levels, I think that Tenal got most of his calls right. And I have to say, there was a few positives despite the loss. It's just so annoying because we've lost the game that actually I think we deserved a point from because of a silly mistake from Casemiro. And this is yet again another silly mistake from Casemiro. But I do think this tweet from Devil's DNA, DNA, DNA does sum up the situation quite well. Today was actually, unlike other claims, one of those games where we did a lot right and matched Arsenal in most phases of play. But due to a silly error, um, considering our uh, entire season struggles, today was a fair fight with the depleted 11, well tried boys. And I was going to sit here and be all annoyed and stuff, but you know what? The players gave 100%. Crystal Palace was an absolute disgrace because those players gave up, they did not try. But today they fought. Today they fought, but we didn't have the quality. Look at our starting 11, look at their starting 11. There's a lot of problems in this team. It is not good enough. The decision making in the final third is shocking. The full the, the fullbacks do not support the wingers. We are putting in cross, we're not putting in crosses. Hoyland doesn't know what's going on. There's no attacking cohesion as well. But today, you know what? We could have got something from that game if we just weren't so bad. Final third, shocking. Silly error from Casemiro, and he was shocking today, and he needs to go to Saudi. But you know what? Ahmad and 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 and, and, and sorry, Ahmad and Amrabat started over Anthony and Eriksson, and that's what I've been wanting the last three, four games. And how much better did we look with Amrabat? How much better did we look with Ahmad Diallo? Particularly that first half, Ahmad Diallo was getting the ball, and Ahmad Diallo was coming in centrally, dribbling, taking on his players. I think he beat. I think he completed like four dribbles, making things happen. Could have arguably won a penalty. Anything exciting was coming from. Ahmad Diallo on that right hand side anything exciting was happening and he was running the show in the first half he was the best player on the pitch in the first half so Lee was probably the best player on the pitch overall he was fantastic he was causing Arsenal so many issues and I don't know how Anthony continues to start over this guy but Anthony offers nothing all Anthony did today was come on and have a crap shot Ahmad was creating things making things happen putting in nice passes to Garnacho, linking up play and unfortunately he's come off injured but I thought when he was getting into those central spaces it was good but what I noticed about Ahmad and what I noticed about Amrabat is they brought that technical security they're good on the ball they're good at retention and all of a sudden our build up looked a lot better we've had a lot of depletion from injuries and Tenog's not really adjusted the system so then it's been bad but Ten Hag is like, we've had a lot of, uh, you know, depletion for injuries. Let's just play players that are a bit more defensive, that can keep the ball a little bit better and be a little bit less direct. And that's what we did in Ahmad and, and Amrabat today. And how much better was our progression of play? How much better was our build-up, particularly in that first half, through Amrabat? We had Amrabat as the six and Maino and Garnacho, Maino and uh, Muktomana, who was invisible as the eights today, but how much better were we on the ball and moving the ball forward? Of course, Arsenal, when they went one up, let us have possession and they set up to counter-attack and maybe that came into our hands. But we looked so, so, so much better in, in build-up because we had someone like Amrabat that's very comfortable on the ball. There's question marks about Amrabat off the ball if he can physically match the levels needed in the Premier League. But on the ball, he brought so much of what we needed. And the other thing I liked was that Ahmad would drop quite deep in build-up, come quite essentially to receive the ball. And Ahmad would use his dribbling skills to carry the ball forward. And Ahmad's ability to keep the ball at his feet. Ahmad very rarely gave the ball away. He'd keep the ball at his feet. He'd hold up the ball, wait for a teammate to catch up to him, pass to a teammate. And I look at Ahmad and I think this is exactly why we need Elise. Ahmad was great today. Elise first choice right wing, Ahmad second choice right wing. Rashford left first choice left wing, gone out to second choice left wing, or the other way around, depending on form. Then you've got four decent wingers there at United because Ahmad's a pass first winger. He gets the ball, he retains the ball, he allows us to control and keep the ball better in the final third, allows players to get up the pitch because he has the ball. But Ahmad and Amrabat was really helping us get from the defence up in the pitch. A couple of times Casemiro was whacking it along, but in general, our build up was so much better today. And I think it's annoying because we've lost because Casemiro has basically fallen asleep and completely played Havertz on, and that was disgraceful for Casemiro. And he's going to go to Saudi. 
But in general, you know, it wasn't that bad. Like we've had 14 losses this season, but when you look at injuries, what more could we have done today? I think that Tenor got it right. I think the players gave 100%. What more could we have done today? The big question is, and people are criticising Hoyland, but what can Hoyland do? There is no cohesion in attack. We might as well not have a striker. Hoyland doesn't know if he's going to get the ball. There's no service to Hoyland. He doesn't know if they're going to cross at the near post. He doesn't know if they're going to cross at the top of the box. We might as well not play with a striker because there's zero plan to get the striker involved in today's game. Game. And while Hoyland wasn't great, and while his back to goal play wasn't great, I do have sympathy for him. Now, look, Garnacho was all right, and I like Garnacho. Garnacho is one of my favourite Man United players because he's not scared. Whenever he gets the ball, he likes to attack forward and make things happen. He doesn't do the boring backwards and sideways passes, and that's what I like about Garnacho. But with Garnacho, you can see he's overplayed. He's started 35 games in a row. He's exhausted. He's mentally and physically drained. He's overplayed. And those final 10 minutes of that game, he was poor. But I will not go in on Garnacho because he's a 19-year-old winger that's almost had to do it all himself this season, take it into his own hands because the rest of the team's been injured and disgraced. He's started 34 games in a row. He's absolutely exhausted. Yes, his decision-making final ball was poor in that last 10 minutes and there was a little bit of selfishness there and he needs to create more for Hoy then. But we know what he's capable of. We know he's a good player. And I think to turn on Garnacho after that poor performance is bad. That is Garnacho's worst game in the Man United shirt this season. But we know what he's capable of. So I won't, I won't turn on Garnacho, but I feel sorry for him. He's absolutely exhausted. He's absolutely overplayed. He gives everything. But today, the final ball was absolutely shocking. Absolutely shocking. But he's just a kid. 35 starts in a row. He needs a rest because we, we you know, he, he needs the season to end. In regards to the striker, Hoyland has no idea if the crosses are going to come in back post, if they're going to come in front post, if they're going to come in at all, if there's going to be a cut back. The worrying thing about me is, and this isn't just on Garnacho, but this is on Hoyland, this is on everything, this is on tactics as well, there's zero attacking cohesion. We went 1-0 down and Arsenal defended well, Arsenal's box defending was really good, but the lack of attacking cohesion from United was worrying. We need a Xerxes, we need a Cunha type player that could be more of a second striker and uh, for Firmino and Nkuku, though that kind of player that can drop deep and get involved into the game because we're not using our striker. And, and then we can have a striker that can facilitate the wingers and get the best out of Garnacho and Elisa, who could be on the wings next season. Because right now, there's no point playing Hoyland. There's no point playing Wheatley. We could have Harry Kane and there'd probably be not much point playing him right now. We aren't getting strikers involved in the game. I'm not going to doubt Garnacho's quality going back to Garnacho, but he just looks drained. He looks absolutely drained. And I think, you know, one of the reasons I also defend Rashford and I'm going to defend Rash uh, Garnacho again today is he had no support from Delo overlapping. Like Delo had a good game. Delo, Mayno, Amad, and Amrabat were our four best players, and four players had a good game today. But, you know, the wingers at United are getting no support from their fullback. They're having no one overlapping. They're basically being asked to play isolation ball for 90 minutes and make things happen out of nothing against the best defence in the league. So, to be fair to Garnacho, while he wasn't great, I don't think it's utterly his fault. I just saw that, you know what? We had a lot of the ball. Arsenal allowed us to have possession. We took care of the ball better. Our possession of the ball was better. But the one big chance Arsenal have, we let them score because we can't defend. We make a silly error. And I think going forward, we created nothing without Bruno. We miss Bruno Fernandes massively today. We need we need to get some established relationship with the front three because there's no cohesion there. But I will say this for a change, and I don't say this a lot this season. I'm not going to be too mad. I'm not going to, because there are positives. We lost today. No one expected us to win. Arsenal in a tight race. Our season's over. I think we deserved a point from today's game. And I think there's a lot of times we've won, but I don't even think we deserved a point. Or a lot of times we've got a point like Brentford where we deserve to lose. Today, we matched Arsenal with the injuries we've had, with where Arsenal were and where we're at right now. You know, and the effort levels and Ten Hag said, I think he got his lineup spot on. I think the yeah, effort levels were spot on. And I think United had the fair share of moments in that game, but we don't have the quality. And this summer transfer window was so important because we don't have the quality. You know, Ahmad showed good quality, but is he ready just yet? That's going to be a big question. I guess the way you can see it is it's a good loss. We didn't get hammered. We showed fight. And I guess that means that Arsenal still have a chance to win the trophy over City, which is technically better for United as well. But obviously, if we lose to Newcastle our next game, we've got no European football. We have we've we've gone from almost having sixth place nailed on to probably not having European football next season, which is an absolute frustration because Chelsea and Newcastle are going to finish above us and they deserve to finish above us. But I wanted to end on the positive. Our Diallo completed three out of five dribbles today, created two chances, won six duels, uh, completed 23 passes, won all of his tackles and won and completed all of his long passes. And he made some really good switches to play. And I hope he's not injured. He came off injured with his knees, had a few issues there. 
because I think he should start over Anthony. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the match down below. I'm trying to be as positive as I can. I think build-up was better. I think general play was better. I don't think it was the most exciting match. I don't think it was the most interesting match, but I'm trying to be positive. Thank you for watching. Bye.